Okay, this then is going to be another experimental topic. Uh, I've set this scene up as the last experiment, which was the obscure uh, gel lighting, and uh, I'm just rendering some skin. And if we just have a quick look at the lighting, how it's set up, I've just paused the render there and go into image based lighting. So we'll light from inside, uh, not casting shadows, add to sky. It's been rotated the HDRI backdrop because I wanted the light coming from slightly behind the figure and um, what I did was I copied the rotation value and used that value to rotate the background that the light source, the, the uh, radial light that's called background, that this targets here. So this is set up for obscure lighting but I'm targeting the radial light of the background that also has a spherical map of this image applied to it so that it emphasizes where the light sources are in this background. The sun's disabled and everything's being lit by that method. But if you see here, we've got the light arriving from somewhere over his shoulder. This is a free model you can get. It's quite a nice model. Uh, the inside of the ear, this area, would be where you'd expect to see some light coming through the thin skin and being sort of reddish. But don't have subsurface scattering. Well, you can fake subsurface scattering in Bryce, but it's a very time consuming process because um, the transparency was optimized in Bryce and you've got a lot of additional ray calculations as soon as you start introducing transparent materials. So I got to thinking, is there a way instead of doing subsurface, which would be through the material, that you can produce an effect that looks a bit like subsurface scattering by using the outside of the model instead? So that would be hypersurface scattering? Is that the opposite of sub? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll call it that. It doesn't really matter. The point is, how can you achieve this effect? Well, I want to think about this because uh, Rashad Carter mentioned using ambience, and uh, that got me thinking. But the ambience would be all over the model, and what I wanted it is to particularly focus on the areas that need lighting up by this effect, so otherwise it just raises the whole temperature of the model. So if we modify this material, right, I'm just going to set this to default. Uh, I'll save this file um, so that I don't lose my place. And then I'll reset the material to a default gray so we can just test this idea. Oh, and I'm going to reset the sky. So if I reset the sky now, that'll get rid of unnecessary things and we can really simplify the lighting and it'll render faster. Set the sky to fully black, go into the sky lab and disable the sun and get rid of the background light source so everything should be rendering black now but we've still got these render options set I'm going to use blurry reflections I'm going to set the raise for pixel down for speed and try and get the light to focus inside the concave areas like the ear so if I select the head use the material reset the material to default grey and use ambience and I'll use some reflection and at this point the combination of reflection and ambience the, because it's in a concave area and I've used blurred reflection and I can increase the amount of blur here so it's maximum will cause the rays when they're calculated when they put in the probes out to get trapped in those areas now normally a, a ray that's trapped like that would return fully black but ambient will keep getting added with each um, calculation as it goes from surface to surface to surface so it should be possible to make it highlight those so let's see where we're going with this okay right so you can see it's going to be a bit more render intensive but I'll just do the ear you can see that it's lighting up the inside edge of that ear which is the effect I was uh, looking for obviously it's emphasized in this example so that it shows off the effect but if we do it subtly it might just uh, might just be enough to create the illusion in certain areas of uh, the subsurface scattering but we're doing it by going over the surface of the model okay right I'll revert to saved and we'll look at trying to set these up then I'm thinking right if we use reflection and ambience we can take from the skin because then it would be the right color and if we're using reflection we want it to be the color of the skin as well so you can use metallicity effect there to 
um, create that response because that tints the reflections according to the surface of the skin color so that's in uh, correspondence give it full ambient response and specular halo are set fully white or it already was so that's okay um, is that going to help me it's probably going to be too bright as things stand so what I need to do is turn the ambient effect down so I'll try a lower level of the effect so that's still looking quite bright there oh because the render options weren't set to blurry reflections so let's see how that looks now still a bit on the bright side I think and it's going to be slow so I'll row the raise per pixel to 16 and preview the ear so you can see now this inner edge is no longer as dark as it was as I was previewing it before I've just opened up use this one for comparison so that's very dark there but overall it's looking a bit bright so it's going to need fine tuning so that the effect is not too, it's not too strong now I don't know if I use specular put specular in whether that's going to no, that's going to be a bad idea isn't it I don't think that value is going to change it there so it's purely down to I'll try reducing the diffuse value so now it's a sort of a combination between blurred reflection which will create problems with uh, Trambian simulation because it will be uh, introducing a bias because the blurred reflection favors the normal from the surface where the, the light is coming in at an angle there's some kind of indexing there but oh, we can only go so far in, in faking this effect without actually having access to the effect okay right well as a rough guide that doesn't look too bad but the only real way to tell is to uh, is to try it at as many rays per pixel as we can throw at it. I've also uh, chosen to have the maximum ray depth at 6 here. That will give more interactions and I was experimenting with the effect of higher maximum ray depth. So I normally set it at 4 and for most applications that's okay but when you've got deeper hollows in models you need a higher maximum ray depth or if you've got transparencies. So with that set up then sorry it's Camtasia uh, causing these menus to hang around let's see we've got reflection but we haven't got transparency reflection is a fairly expensive effect we've got higher ray depth and the render times coming in at about an hour so we'll let that render out and have a look at what it looks like when it's done and see if it's in any way plausible here's the uh, completed render and well the overall effect is a bit creepy which it's not necessarily a bad thing because it indicates we've sort of taken a step in the right direction because there's this concept of um, the uncanny valley where as things become more realistic then um, they, they tend to look corpse-like which is unpleasant or like zombies and while this isn't realistic it's getting close because it's got like a doll's head aspect to it and um, it's the effect I was looking for is working here but perhaps less so here the front part of the face looks a bit too glowy I think with um, with skin it's probably and, and faces certainly is probably going to be the most difficult thing you're going to try and render because obviously we see them all the time and you know we're evolved to be able to look at a face and understand a lot about it in a short time because it's a you know, survivally imperative. Um, the light under hit the chin here is, uh, looks quite good to me. Um, this area not so good, a bit flat. This crease in the neck is probably part of the image that uh, came with the model. There's a bit of a highlight there that makes his ear look a bit greasy. And there's another strange highlight here. I'm not quite sure what's causing that. And here. Um, obviously picking things up in the background because we're, we're incorporating reflection and true ambience we've got two effects that both light to gather in a way true ambience um, is light gathering in in the correct way in that it's it looks as it environs and and when the gathering probes get out they are very even-handed in the way they they look at the environment which is why you get the noise because it can find light areas next to dark areas whereas a blurred reflection will tend to favor the incidence angle that a true reflection would follow but with 
some kind of Gaussian distribu distribution on that based on the specular halo which has been set very high so that gives maximum blurring. Uh, there's the sphere there, it's obviously got some blurring on that material there just, just as a reminder we can see the HDRI in the background of the predominant light source which is uh, over this uh, fellow's shoulder there somewhere hence the you know, reason for getting this uh, red inside the ear because otherwise uh, it's still a bit dark just there obviously further fine tuning might just be enough to refine this image to make it plausible but I, I'm not entirely convinced that's the case but a step in the right direction and an interesting experiment I hope you agree so that's the end of this uh, tutorial experiment <laughs>